Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Care Partner Learning Series webinar, Navigating the Holidays with an FTD Diagnosis. I'm Stephanie Quigley, AFTD's Helpline Manager, and on behalf of AFTD, I thank you for joining us. Please note that our audience will be muted throughout this webinar to keep background noise to a minimum. If you're experiencing any technical issues, please write a message in the Q&A box and a member of the AFTD staff will try to address them. This webinar will be recorded and archived for later viewing on AFTD's website. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that AFTD is hard at work planning our 2025 education conference, which will take place May 2nd, just outside Denver, Colorado. A special symposium on genetic FTD will be held May 1st, along with a number of social events later that evening. Registration for the conference will be open early in the new year, but for now you can save these dates. Our annual conference brings together people affected by FTD, experts in the field, and other healthcare professionals for a full day of learning and connection. If you cannot make it to Denver, you have the option to follow along with our free live stream. Additionally, most sessions will be recorded for later viewing. To learn more and to sign up to be notified when registration opens, please visit the URL at the bottom of the screen. Today, we have the pleasure from hearing from AFTD's Persons with FTD Advisory Council, whose members help work to help ensure that insights and voices of people living with FTD are considered in the development of AFTD's policies, programs, and services. The council is an evolution of the informal think tank of persons diagnosed that had been informing AFTD's work since 2015. It was formally chartered in 2020. Today's presentation was pre-recorded to accommodate the needs of the presenters who are all living with FTD. You will be hearing from Ann Ferguson, Deborah Job, council co-chair Kevin Rhodes, Amy Shives, and co-chair Sandy Howell. We know how the holidays can be stressful. So, um, you know, we just want to kind of talk a little bit on how you guys have navigated um, dealing with the holidays. And the first question I have is how have the holidays made you feel and what would you want others to know? I can start on that. I, I think it, that it has made me feel uh, change is inevitable for everyone, I think, for the holidays. And, and as we age, and I'm 67, I think, um, change is going to happen anyway, because your kids are not there for Santa because they are 32 and they are 38 years old and they have their own homes. So that's an adjustment for anyone. But put on top of that, how I don't feel like I am doing what I used to do for the holidays. I can't manage the, the gifts that are perfect. I can't manage getting decorations out of the basement. Um, I try to do that and I just sit down. So there's some apathy, but then there's some pain there because I would like it to be as it was. I would like to feel the way it, I felt then. Uh, if, if I can't have that because of the age of my kids, I would like to feel some joy that's there. And with this disease, I don't feel any joy at all. So that's me. I can I can concur with with some of what Amy is saying. I, I still try to I still try to find joy, and I am fortunate now. Uh, since we're back in, in where we are located now that I have my my two, you know, adult daughters and and a wonderful son-in-law son and amazing four-year-old grandson who kind of brings some of that joy back in. But I do find it overwhelming and daunting uh, when looking at what we did before versus now one of the things that becomes a struggle is hosting. Uh, and I still want to host big gatherings. And my husband's like, 
no, no, <laughs> uh, because you know, you, I I see what you don't see, and and on those bad fuzzy days, that ability is just not there. And of course, with the you know brace on my right leg now, being able to pick thing, you know, get things up and down, like I can't go on a ladder anymore or, or do anything like that. Uh, so you know, we've kind of had to rethink how we do normally would do things now i'm also very blessed that my daughters are like they're within you know 30 30 minutes they'll be like okay mom we'll come over you know clean get help get things set up that that kind of stuff um so you know ha having family close like that is fortunate but it's still really really you know we're still very cognizant of what's happening to us and that we know that our, our abilities have become limited in in many aspects of our life we don't do christmas cards anymore uh, we do a secret santa now to make it just one thing you know <laughs> for, for for not have to worry you know like like amy said trying to find find the the right gift and that and then also i can't drive so I, there's no, you know, Amazon and in online shopping is the only way for me to really try to pick things, or, or, or so it does simplify it from from that aspect. And yeah, uh, I, yeah but I don't. Um, um, I, I I I agree with you. I don't like Amazon. I'd rather go out and touch the stuff in the store. But but I've had to adapt to that. That sounds silly, but I don't get any joy over pushing buttons on a computer. It's, I'm older. I like to go touch things in the store and try things on. But I think I, what I'm getting from what you're saying is we're aware that we're not aware. We're aware yeah. that things are different. And, and in FTD, that is a particular situation with us. We are aware that things are different. I agree very, very, very much so. I think what I would want others to know is don't expect the same as what has happened in the past, be adaptable, be understanding and compassionate and, and be adaptable. And it's hard, I know it's tough to work around an individual's needs, but that is is the case and understand it's not because we don't, we don't want it to be that way. It's just part of reality now. I was going to say that I think it's from other people that I've talked to in the FTD world, okay? It's really hard to get together with families. It feels very lonely because especially for myself, okay, I got this when my kids were teenagers. And so, you know, they're not used to talking with you you know a lot of people get very lonely they go to a, a relative's house but maybe they don't talk to you you know they talk to your husband they don't talk to you because they think that you're not going to understand or you're not going to whatever and so it's can get very it can get very lonely and you think why am i even here okay why am i even here in this family gathering if nobody wants to talk to me okay and so every year you kind of relive that again oh here we go again nobody's going to talk to me lonely is a key word and that lonely is, is the key huge, word huge huge word because people don't know sometimes what to do or it's easier to talk to other people mm-hmm I'm blessed that I haven't had to experience that, but for me, when there's really large groups, it gets very chaotic, and I, I, I just get over overwhelmed, and and so it's like I I need a a, a safe space or or a quiet place to go just to be able to sometimes get away, and and you know, before I say something or explode or or you know break out in tears. Mm -hmm. But do you grieve that, Deb, uh, is, that you know you have to leave the room? Does that make you overwhelmingly sad 
Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there, there is a lo loneliness to that. I mean, there's absolutely loneliness. Um, uh, and because for me, it's mostly immediate family. Everyone's been very supportive and, and they do, they go out of their way to try to make, make sure I'm okay and, and, and don't talk down to me. But when we were in Florida and we were in situations where we didn't have family and we'd be out with, with, with people we knew, there were some people that just fell away, just mm -hmm. fell away because they don't know how to ha handle it. And, 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 you know, then it's like, yeah, hi, I'm right here. You know, I, I, you know, I, I may struggle or I may that or, or finishing, you know, getting frustrated, finishing my sentences or, or jumping in, not allowing me that time to really process and re respond. And then I give up and I get lonely and I just kind of get really sad about that because I'm like, I still have a point of view and it's, it's like a vicious cir circle, isn't it, Amy? Yeah. Yeah, like recently, I mean, it just kind of hit me again. Um, I was, I still do Christmas cards. So I was getting some pictures together and I saw a picture and I asked my daughter-in-law um, down south, I said, would this be an okay picture to put in our picture, picture card? And she said, um, Thank you for actually asking me this time. You Ouch. know, Ouch. yeah, because it's like one time they were outside in um, and then she gave me another picture to put in instead. OK, because because I get in trouble sometimes because it's like they had a gathering with with everybody wearing pajamas outside taking pictures and I put a picture out there and I posted it or whatever and then my son called me and go you know you shouldn't have posted that picture Arlene is upset because she didn't look good or whatever in the picture and I'm like it was outside okay you know so I get into trouble sometimes just because of little things like that and you know, and my, so I have to, anyway, it's just. But it yeah. feels big, Anne. That felt big because that's your daughter-in-law and you were corrected. And evidently she held out into that for a year. And um, it's hard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What did I do wrong? Okay. Oh, did I do that wrong? Oh, did I get that wrong? Um, and that wasn't me before. And now I have to yeah. be, maybe that's humbling and maybe that's good. But I, I see the pain for you, Anne, when when you didn't know you were harming her. You know, and then I get it from my husband. Oh, you should have thought about that before you you did that. You should have asked her or whatever. And I'm like, no. get away from me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get that all, 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 all the time. And I think, you know, that's part of, of, of the challenges and then it's more ex exasperated during the holiday season because you know you're looking at what traditions are and now you have to you're altering and and, and changing traditions and then there's expectations and and things that you could so easily do in the past you can't and and then i'll get that well did you not think about that and i'm like no i did i didn't and then i feel guilty and i feel bad about it because and then they don't trust you after that once you make one mistake they go oh we can't trust her anymore you know it's that disease we can't trust her anymore yeah or or oh i've seen this before but we're trying you know we're really trying and we want to be as independent as possible so we still there's a lot that we can do and accomplish just have patience you know if i tell anybody have but specifically for us, um, we've all had marriages that I, I'm judging us to have had pretty equal marriages as far as partnership and, and deciding things. Yes. Well, by virtue of me not running any of the money, um, and that's a good thing, and my husband knows what's in the checking account, what, what's, yep. what's due, you know, like people do, they have to know. And he does. So I spend some money on Amazon 
and it's like, well, I wish you'd have waited till next week. Well, okay. I feel like it, a little bit disciplined and a little bit just sad that I'm not the equal decider because I'm not the decider about anything anymore. I, I can I can relate, relate to that. I was the one that took care of everything down to the penny and we had to, now I have a smaller account now and 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 um, he handles the big big one now and it's like you know don't don't now there's an x dollar amount don't purchase anything above this or tell me if you're gonna do something and I'm like i never had to do it's this like before. treated like a child you know that's right. what it's like yeah i under i understand why i do oh yeah it. but this is where especially when you're 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 looking for guests for people and you're in, in things where you're like do i have to get permission for this yeah we earned independence we we work and the three of us worked outside of the home and um we worked and we earned the ability to make our own decisions and not lose the ability at our age to, to not make the decisions but the fact is that the money has to run smoothly. And the fact is, it does. I need to do what he says because guess what? He knows where the money is. But, you know, okay, we can go to Costco, but we can only spend this way. I don't want to go to Costco if I've got a limit of not the same. It's that loss of independence and, and independent and, and, and decision making. Mm -hmm. And, you know, well, that's one of the ways I did to kind of combat that a bit is it's like uh if i want to buy something personal or whatever you know i i get money from different areas or whatever research whatever i do and it's like i i uh i have an envelope near my desk where i keep a bunch of money in a bunch of dollar bills and stuff so I'll tell my husband, I bought something for myself. I'm going to go to the bank and deposit some money. <laughs> that's how I get away with it. But you, sh yeah, that's great. And it's worked. And I know you so well. I know how you do that. Mm -hmm. Makes me incredibly sad that you have to. That's all. Mm -hmm. Well, we all have to face that, that rea reality. But, you know, it's like, I think we did something, Anna, try to comment very similar. Now I have again that a, 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 se a separate account for me, and then I could use that. So mm -hmm. I have, I have, I still have some, I have still have some po power. Still have some power. In some in, some decision something. making up yeah, to a certain dollar amount. Autonomy, you have some autonomy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that I mean that de definitely helps. But you know, as we're talking about the ho holidays here. I think, you know, that's one aspect when you're used to determining the gift you want to give somebody and, and then, you know, being having that in, independence to be able to, to do that. Uh, it, but it's, that's one aspect. There's so much more that we, we struggle with um, during the ho holidays. And that is that anxiety and that overwhelming and that sadness and sometimes that loneliness and, and uh, and those not being able to do what we've done before, having to pair pair things down. Um, if a tradition, which, which traditions in our family are very, very important, even having to alter in a tradition, it's a good thing because you still have a tradition, but you mourn the loss of that tradition that you've done for 30 years. And that's, you know, that's heartbreaking at times. It is heartbreaking and it's, such an empty and it goes into the lonely and then when you're home sometimes alone um for me my husband still works a lot so i am alone um the lonely just kind of clouds everything so the thought of the holidays and what i can't do it it just it feels very lonely um it turns into lonely for me yeah because you got somebody here who just loves christmas <laughs> she starts in October watching Christmas movies. <laughs> There's not, nothing wrong with that. I love Christmas too. They're not quality movies and I tape them so I don't have to. I'm not going to defend myself. There's no defense. Thank you. <laughs> There's nothing to defend yourself. 
four. She knows. She knows. She knows. I don't know. I love her. Many oh. times. Blown oh. here. She knows. What can I say? I know her secret, so. I could definitely. It's safe with me. I don't know. I, uh, you know, what, 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 what can we do? What can we do? We can try to do new. That's what we have to do. That's what people have to do that are not disabled. They have to adapt because th things change. People like me don't want the change. Change means lonely to me. Always, always. Change means bad. And for a lot of reasons in my background. So change isn't good for me. So I have to embrace the change. So this year, Santa's not coming because they're 38 and 32. But um, I'm going to do up, and we're traveling across the state. I'm going to do stockings like I never did before. They travel well. You can't do a lot of mistakes on stockings. They're little things. So, you know, good for me. That might work out. That might help me. Um, they might like it. That's what I've come up with. A, little, a, a change that's to the positive that, that doesn't feel as isolating. I think that's br brilliant. And that's, I actually just started to do something very, very similar. Is I, I, I last year I, I made, made, <laughs> best of my ability, the stockings for the kids. And there's, you know, even though they're not kids anymore, come on, they're 35, 37, 35. Or I can't remember how the other gentleman is, my daughter's boyfriend, friend. But you know, and they're like kids at a candy store getting the stocking. So it that that brought almost the kid out in them, which they'll love. I think they'll really love that, Aunt Amy. That is super, but some of us look for really nice stockings on Amazon and there's a lot to buy. <laughs> oh yeah. No, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> With their names. <laughs> Yeah, well, the finger thing is a little scary. Uh, how, okay, I'll have to talk to you later about how you made it and what you made. I think you can, there's just wonderful ways to make that. And if you're a craft person, or maybe you can become a craft person. So here I am. I'm not a craft and I haven't become, so. I would buy them too. I just gave it a shot. <laughs> so. But you're right, Amy. It, it's it's how, how do we adapt? Uh, what are things that we've done to to really um, try and minimize that anxiety, that that stress, uh, to adapt, but also to be clear and communicate to family or friends or whoever you're around the holiday what those needs are and how I'm going to need to adapt, but I also need your support in adapting as, as well on maybe not such a large gathering, or again, not exchanging a ton of, ton, ton of gifts, or um, I can't make all that. I can't really cook because I burn myself, my husband. Well, he does He does 99.9% .9 of, 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 of the cooking now, I'm quite the chef. Uh, but I, I, the things that I used to make, I, it's not going to happen. Either it's going to go come from the store, right? You know, or someone else needs needs to take over that, you know, that that ability to organize and and um, and and manage the the holiday uh, uh, food. I, I guess is 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 that. Uh, but you mourn that 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 because that was your responsibility and you liked it. And I loved I loved hosting. Yeah. Loved loved, loved it. The whole it's, thing, the planning, the decorating, everything. the whole thing. It's it's and it it's people do that, but I was a mom person doing that. So maybe the Girl Scout troop was coming over too, or the volleyball team, and I would have everything ready for whatever in the holiday theme. It was it was pretty wow, yeah. And now we don't have that. And um, very fortunately for me, my my daughters like to cook. We're going to my daughter's house, and she will be she she makes the holiday meals. And quite frankly, she's a better cook than I ever was. So I get to be very um, very app uh, appreciative of her, and that's a positive thing too. 
Yeah, but there there are ways to to adapt, and you know there are things that we've done. You know, like I said, personally, we've done in in, in our in our family, um, just kind of typically typically you know smaller gatherings if you need it. Uh, but if you don't, but making sure there's a there's a place set aside where where I could go. Um, being very clear with with individuals that you know if if I'm not having a good day. I probably won't respond or have the personality I normally do if I have to beg out or, or you know, step away for a while and understand that. Um, level set those 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 expectations. And I'm fortunate with my family that that that's never an issue. Now that we're back here, um, it what it did become an issue when when we live, lived out of state and, and it was harder for, you know, people to understand that but i had to i have to be very clear on i can't do this this year or i need you to take this o- over uh so it, it adapt and then having that that quiet room changing how we you know how we've done gifts uh and how, how are you with that does that make you feel guilty lonely um unattached or have you worked that through because if you have i need the recipe well, I I, it, I think what I feel really sad and lonely about is I, uh, as much as I love Christmas, I love Thanksgiving. And we used to set a formal dining room table, like brought the china out, the crystals. I would do set, centerpieces with like fall leaves and acorns and put floating tea candles in there. Of course. We'd have like 26, yeah. you know, 20 to 26 people. A big, huge, traditional Thanksgiving, you know, the napkin rings, every, it, it, I mean, it was like, you know, just, it, my mom was, that was her tradition when she was with us. It became mine. Do we, does any, does any, uh, uh, my sister-in-law is, has, has taken over Thanksgiving and she does an amazing job and, and, um, but because it, then I'm so blessed but because it was mom to daughter and me losing that ability that just broke me my heart broke my heart it Mm -hmm. still does Mm -hmm. that's when you have to you know kind of okay change change is not bad it's just a different way but the, the the heart of it is still there I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the struggles that you have during the holiday season and how do you adapt to make it work for you? Okay. So one of the struggles I had um, about two years ago is unfortunately it happened over the Christmas holidays and I had a huge bout of apathy that hit me. And I actually stayed in my bed for 23 hours and didn't want to interact with anybody. Uh, So what my wife told our, like our grandkids and um, just grandpa, or they call me umpa. So umpa, umpa doesn't feel well. And, you know, they, they went on and there's been a couple of events. My wife is uh, very, very uh, understanding of my apathy when it hits um you know events people in general shouldn't be afraid to say i just not in a good place to go to this family event today um facetime me when you get there and i can say hello to everybody but i can't be around the crowd um you know those kind of things or if you go to a place and i've done this before you go into a friend's house Make sure they got a bedroom or something like that that you can escape to and just be there for a little while to kind of decompress yourself. And some of the lessons I've learned are you get all this anxiety. And one way to release the anxiety is, believe it or not, just lean on a wall. You put pressure on your body and that helps relieve it. In preparation for going, wear things that put pressure on your body. They have compression shirts. They have compression socks that you can wear. 
if you don't mind wearing a hat, you wear a fitted hat so it kind of fits around your head, makes some compression. And then leaning on a wall, the nice thing about leaning on a wall is it looks completely natural. It doesn't look foreign to anybody. So you can lean on a wall and have conversations and it's relieving your anxiety, anxiety a little bit. So my basic advice to anybody for the holidays, just be honest with your caretaker and your family about how you feel on that particular day. If you can get yourself up and you can get there and you can spend some time with your family, fantastic. They're going to appreciate it. Maybe you can only spend half an hour or 45 minutes or an hour with them and then you got to escape. So at least make the most of what you can make the most of. And if you can't, if your apathy is slapping you in the face really hard, then go ahead and just let them know that you're suffering from the apathy and you're sorry, but you can't go, you can't go to this event. Don't feel bad about it because it's not you. It's what's up here causing the apathy. Does that make sense? It does. Those are some good tips. Sandy, what about you? Well, I'm one that loves to go to be around people, but when that noise gets too much, uh, I have an advantage. I have a hearing aid that nobody sees because I'm concerned about that, but shouldn't be. So I can just basically mute it. So I have my own set of earplugs in. I mean, I can still hear everything, but it takes the whole whoo down. And then I try to, you know, it sounds a little backwards, but I go, if there's little grandchildren, just remove myself and play with them. And, you know, yeah, they have their squeals, but if I'm toned down in that amount, there's only a couple of, well, in our family situation, there's only a couple. And most people, once they realize you're, watching them they they really don't need you with the other 15 people um but i agree with kevin that makes sense that there is a place to go and it needs to not be the bathroom because people do need to use the bathroom but that idea well she'll be out in a little bit you know just kind of nonchalant um it, it i am in early stages so there's a lot of uh, extended family that still think I sh am fine. So um, I just try to learn phrases also. Like if there's so much going on and I can't keep up or something, I'll just do, a, oh, wow, you know, and just act like I'm engaged. So it's like, you got to be careful with the tone, of course, but uh, that's what I try to do. Yeah. And on top of that, don't get any conversations that will make you mad because we've lost our filter between our brain and our mouth. So don't get us going about something like politics, for example, at a holiday event, you know, keep it to family. And I really like Sandy's idea too. If I love playing with my grand granddaughters. So, you know, get down on the floor and let them ride on your back, pretend you're a horse and that will take some anxiety off you because you're putting pressure on your knees and your hands and your back because your 35 pound granddaughter sitting on your back. And uh, that helps too. What about the stress for the holidays? I know it can be a very stressful time for everyone. Um, but specifically, you know, before a gathering or even during a gathering, how, what are some tips on how you handle stress in those situations? So I know when I get in a stressful situation like that, one of the things I do is I always try to get some extra sleep. And sleep seems to rejuvenate me. Um, but I also get up in plenty of time because if I just get up, take a shower and go, I'm still in a fog. I got to sit down and like do my little routine. Give yourself enough time to do the little routine. And then talk honestly about, your your spouse or your caregiver or whoever that happens to be um like for me if i'm under a lot of anxiety in the car i've got gum and i'll put four or five pieces of gum in my mouth and chew and it's been proven if you chew your your mandible muscles 
actually relax the back of your, your, your head. So they help you relax a little bit. So have something to chew on. Uh, that's, you know, not going to be totally damaging to you. Uh, and try that. Um, don't be afraid to be completely silent in the car because you're thinking about what's going on. Um, don't be afraid to be asked what's wrong or how you're feeling. Uh, just be honest about it. And, you know, it's it's a nervous thing to do. It's ve- It can be very nervous depending on the situation. Just take some some uh, time to figure out what works for you for anxiety. Sandy? A uh, couple things. I guess it depends on the level of anxiety, but I tend to take, sometimes it seems like twice as long as I normally would to get going. Um, at that same time, it could be more time to build up anxiety but if i can get outside or whatever just do something physical um then that kind of tones my brain down and anxiety does build up in conversations and i just all of a sudden remove myself and go join another one because you know people look at me like where's she going but i thought oh well that's your problem not mine okay yeah, and that, I mean, that that's great advice, Sandy. You know, um, we know what's causing our anxiety. There's sometimes there's really no way to fix it. So be prepared to live your life the way that you need to live your life. Or if you got to remove yourself from a conversation and go join another one, so be it. Yeah. What are some ways that you guys have found new traditions or maybe new ways to enjoy the holidays since being diagnosed? Have you changed any of your old traditions in any way? Have you started new traditions or adapted traditions? One of the things that we've done, my wife and I, um, is instead of having everybody over to our house for Christmas, uh, we have a small family gathering on Christmas Eve, and we've actually gotten a really small Christmas tree. <laughs> Not a Charlie Brown tree, but bigger than that. Um, and uh, so now what's happening is our kids are all in their 30s, so we can go to each kid's house or meet at one of the kid's house and everybody or to our friend's house, and they're doing the hosting and they're doing all that. So we don't have to worry about the anxiety of, I got to get this ready and I got to get this ready and I got to get this cooked and I got to make these pressure, these presents are wrapped and all that kind of thing. So the only thing you got to worry about is make sure I bring the presents with me when I'm going somewhere and it's much, much easier. That sounds a little weird, but like Christmas time wrapping presents, one daughter-in-law, she likes to wrap presents. So I don't have the presents wrapped. She wraps them. I mean, I put hers in a box or something so she doesn't know, but she just keeps wrapping away. And then that's just the two of us. So that creates less, you know, we don't really hear totally what's going on in the other room. So that is a weird way to be, uh, I handle it. And, um, oh, what was the question again? Um, what are some new traditions? Since being diagnosed, or how have you adjusted? Um, Less Christmas stuff, less decorations. um, Partly because too much, it just seems even more cluttery than normal. Um, Like my eyes can't settle down because there's so much different things to look at. And then that transfers to my brain, or maybe the brain leads the eyes. I don't know. No, but that's a good point, though. Not having too many decorations around is a good. Yeah, point. I, I mean, think of um, think of like when you were young, and you walked into a place like well, it's like walking into Lowe's or Home Depot now. Uh, you walk in and they got these giant twenty foot Christmas decorations, like half the store. So imagine something like not quite that tall, but something like that in your house, and how you can get overstimulated. Well, it's easy for us with FTD get her, to get overstimulated to Sandy's point. And if you, the more you can keep the overstimulation down, the better you're going to be. 
I mean, you can be overstimulated, go to somebody else's house, but why have it happen at home? So we talked a lot about how you guys have handled the holidays, how you've handled stress during the holidays, some of the adaptations that you have been trying or have tried or continue to use. So let's talk about what joys you do find in the holidays and, you know, the new traditions that um, you've been able to make and how have you been able to find and enjoy these, these holidays and gatherings? I, I think a, a couple ways is one, um, you know, I'm a very faithful person. So for me, Leaving it up to God, prayer has de definitely helped. Uh, but I, I remember, I try to remember, and again, me being so fortunate just to have, we're a close family and have us all together. And, and, and you know, I've seen, I've seen my my girls, I've seen my dad, I've seen many of my family, my, my grandson more in the last year than I have in the last eight year, years. So knowing that having having that that family and, and and sorry um i'm losing my train of thought no go on Anne or amy i'm losing my train of thought at the moment i think it's nice that uh, deb's got all this family but the reality is that's a real exception to the rule okay i have to say most people with FTD, they're lucky that their family even talks to them anymore. Okay. Um, you know, it's, you know, when I go to my son's house one time down south or whatever, I was going to take the three year old to the park. And it's like, it's, and this is not necessarily a holiday thing, but it's, it's talking about how it feels okay it's like he goes okay but make sure you take your phone with you okay and which way are you going to go when you go outside go out the door i'm going to go to the left and just keep going to the left and the park is there okay all right <laughs> it's just so much uh, between being treated like a child one minute and then the next minute being treated like your mother i mean my mother i'm like i'm his mother whatever it's like you got to check the wind every so often to see which one you're going to be for the day <laughs> yeah never know minute by minute which one you're going to be for the day. Okay. Because then the next thing I know, he says at Christmas time, he goes, I want to do something really nice for you. And he bought me this whole spa thing that was over $200. You know, I talked to Arlene and, and we really, I really wanted to do, and she said to me, he really thought about this a lot because he drew my name or whatever and wanted to do that. So that was really nice, but then it's like, then I have to get instructions, tell him how I'm going to take his daughter to the park. <laughs> yes. And you have to react. You're, you're on pins and needles thinking, oh, okay, now I'm doing this. Oh, okay. I'm not going to get annoyed at him for saying that. Yeah. It's, you're just, you're the, you're the ball being juggled and. You understand he has issues too, of course, as all of our children do with this. But mm -hmm. it's another stress for you. Mm -hmm. Mine's different. I uh, I do not have grandchildren. I have uh, my my children do not wish to have children, and that's my reality. Um, and 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 without having had them, it's still a loss. All of my friends have grandchildren. Every last friend. My friends from college from 50 years ago have grandchildren and that's I've embraced that because I try to to be part of their family. 
So that's that's my lifestyle. That that's just it. People don't have grandchildren. It's a fact, and I'm one of them. My my children are not in my, my vicinity at all. The closest one is 300 miles away. So the fact is, they're not dropping in and helping um, helping me um, do anything. I have a husband, so I'm fair, I'm very fortunate that that I have that. But we all have different configurations of family, and when when you watch too much Waltons on the TV. And it's funny. It's it is funny, uh, and you start to really personify and think about how nice that would be. And I'm being flippant saying Waltons, but I think everyone knows. You have to remember, as Anne just said, not everybody has the 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 sprawling family that mostly gets along that comes over, and 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 it's a beautiful day. Um. And I have FTD, but all that happened. I'm happy. No, no. A, mo a lot of people listening today don't have a lot of grief for a lot of reasons. And then the FTD fell on their head on top of that. And nothing was solved. It's still there. And other than you probably have less skills now to deal with it. So there's, there's the, the negative of, of from me. And that's the, that's the challenge we have. We have, we have to move on. And, and myself, I buy a lot of birthday presents for all of my friends' grandchildren. Oh, I love, I love that. You're like, you're like the adopted grandmother. I like toys. I like to go buy toys. It's all about me. Oh. About me. <laughs> I love that. that that's that fabulous. Yeah. You know, and it's, um, Oh, I had it and then I lost it. Never mind. <laughs> right, God, totally. I, you know, joy is a personal emotion, and what what drives somebody's joy for one person is going to be different from another. Um, you know, there are other ways I think um, to experience joy. It may just be with your significant other or watching your absolute favorite holiday movies. Right. And that person being there with you, watching it with your favorite snacks or whatever it is. Uh, um, I get a lot of joy on finding, you know, there's like giving trees and things like that. Yes. To, to, um, to don't, to, to, uh, I forgot what they call it when you select a child um, or a child, but I always go for like the teens. Because nobody ever really wants to, everyone that wants to do a donation for a little or get the on the wish list, get the little ones because they're adorable, right? It's but more I always, I, it's more yeah. fun. To, yeah. But I always go for those that, that either a teen young lady or a teen man that, that, you know, what they really need. But I, I, it brings me joy to know that they're going to get something that means something to, to them. Um, and that's that's other ways of, of, of joy, I think. Um, joy in treating yourself to something that you really enjoy, that you really want for yourself. Like Amy said, take care of you. Maybe it's a manicure, pedicure. Maybe it's, you know, I don't know, uh, um, like you said, mm -hmm. the store, going to the store, into your favorite stores or whatever that, that may be. or whatever is something that's personal to, to you to help. Um, the one thing I think that I really want to stress is, is, is I hope this helps people realize the struggles and the emotions that we carry daily, but how they really, really get exasperated come to the forefront around holidays. By listening, hopefully, maybe you'll look at some different ways to communicate with us to have more patience to maybe adapt and change uh traditions and ho holidays to be you know a little more uh, um uh, i don't want to say simpler but to me and i know like my husband this was very stressful for him i mean i i feel a lot of guilt and I'm sure because he's not only at to see of his own medical conditions he has to worry about. Now he's got to worry about me 
it, what my day is like. And, you know, it's like when I wanted to have you know, this big, we were you know, Christmas Eve, he's like, yeah, what happens if you can't? It's all on me. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I have to take his, his needs in consideration too. So if people can just really listen to what all of three of us are saying. And, and, and Deb, Deb, it's, and, and, yes. And, and so uh, uh, mine for what you said is if you're annoyed, imagine how annoyed I am. If you're annoyed or, or sad about something I just did and would relate, imagine how sad I am about me. Me, my, my, that I'm just trying to maintain here. I'm just trying to maintain. No one else can do it for me. And I have a brain disease. So there you are. And you can't feel sorry for yourself. And you can't be the stick in the mud. And when you go to your room to, to calm down, you're, oh, she went to have a nap. So we all encounter different things. And, 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 and Deb is so right about that joy that she found. I, I am similar to you, Deb. I am, I do volunteer work, not because I'm, oh, she's so good. No, it's because it's, it's about me and I love it. Here we are today. We don't get paid. Um, right. This, this is a volunteer position for us. And uh, speaking for the three of us, we love it, but volunteering, you have to find your own niche. So yes. Deb described picking up a tag for a teenager on a wishing tree gives her joy and and a lot of people could do that if they have the funds um, other people can work at the food bank yes. with their with their care partner not everyone can some people can do what we do uh, not everybody um, can wants to be a public speaker I'm an old teacher so it doesn't bother me but most people many people wouldn't imagine doing this uh, find your own find your own heart find your own joy um, and it may be uh, doing something in your home for people. Yeah. Uh, maybe you're making something. Uh, you find your own. And that tag, that wishing tag is perfect. You just brought up a really good thought, Amy, that I, that just came. You know, at, for any if care partners are watching here, ask. Ask the person living, what will make you happy? What is one thing that you really want? Ask. Before we wrap things up, I wanted to share two Help and Hope articles that may also be helpful as AFTD's newest Help and Hope support um, entitled Resources for Traveling with FTD. You can find these resources on the AFTD website, and we will also send them out in an email next week with the link to these resources. AFTD's next webinar, FTD Research, Where You've Come From and Where We're Headed, takes place on December 11th from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The presenters will discuss the latest advancements in FTD research and how scientific breakthroughs are bringing us closer to effective treatments for FTD. Visit AFTD's homepage to register. Thank you for joining us and thanks to the persons with FTD Advisory Council for sharing their insights. If you have any additional questions or comments about today's presentation, please reach out to the AFTD helpline at 866-507-7222 or info at theaftd.org. We'd love to hear from you and thank you.